So on the one hand, we've got the newly released Steam Deck, and on the other, we've got the aging, but wildly successful Nintendo Switch. So in an absolute battle to the death, who comes out on top, the time-honored Nintendo Switch or the newcomer in the Valve Steam Deck? Now, fundamentally, I personally find console war arguments to be pretty silly for the most part. But sometimes it's fun to be silly and just kick around the pros and cons of one system versus another just for the sake of entertainment and sparking debate. So that's exactly what I wanted to do today is talk about some of the ways that the Steam Deck is just infinitely better than the Nintendo Switch. And then on the flip side, also some of the ways the Nintendo Switch just absolutely dunks on the Steam Deck. And again, I'm going to try to do this in as balanced a way as possible because despite the fact that I am absolutely loving the Steam Deck so far, I can't rightly say as somebody with about 200 Switch games sitting back here that it's going to completely dethrone the Nintendo Switch for me either. So let's start with some of the obvious advantages that the Steam Deck has over the Nintendo Switch. And one of the first ones that I would say is comfort. Even though from a form factor perspective, there is a lot of similarity between the Steam Deck and the Nintendo Switch, I gotta say the Steam Deck definitely gets the edge in terms of comfort. And I think the obvious reason that's the case is because it has such a thicker profile, meaning that when you're holding it, it feels more akin to a traditional controller that you would play with a console rather than just sort of a stripped down portable, which is what the Nintendo Switch feels like. Now granted the Nintendo Switch in all of its iterations is certainly lighter than the Steam Deck, but still if I had to play any game for an extended period of time, especially an action heavy game that required a lot of frantic controls, I would pick the Steam Deck over the Switch every time. The analog sticks are more raised on the Steam Deck, giving you a greater degree of control. The D-pad is certainly better than the default offering that you get on the Nintendo Switch, because having a true D-pad rather than just four face buttons certainly just feels better. But beyond all of that, even if there were certain controls that did not feel quite as good as they did on the Nintendo Switch, by default, the Steam Deck has two sets of rear paddles so you can remap as much as you would like if you want to make certain controls easier to reach, depending on whatever game that you're playing. And honestly, the one-for-one -one comfort advantage that I think the Steam Deck has over the Nintendo Switch kind of feeds in my next point, that it really just has better and more flexible controls overall. Again, like I already mentioned, if you did find something to be uncomfortable, you have the flexibility of using those rear paddles to basically customize the game experience however you'd like. Not to mention, whenever you go to change the controller configuration for any of the games that you want to play, it's not just that you can do so piecemeal in a way that makes sense to you, but you can also lean on the strength of the community and look at templates people have already come up with for whatever game that you're playing. That's sort of an inherent advantage, and beyond that, I would say that even the build quality of the controls on the Steam Deck are definitely higher than what we got out of the Nintendo Switch. It's not like you have to look very far to find any horror stories about stick drift or Joy-Cons failing altogether. And while the Steam Deck really hasn't been out in the wild long enough to really get an idea of its long-term hardware reliability, it is nice that they at least went to the effort of providing a full teardown video of the innards of the Steam Deck and made sure to make it a point that yes, you can replace the six there should they ever fail or start to experience drift. Not to mention the Steam Deck does provide those touchpads and touch-sensitive analog sticks to provide even more control options if you choose to indulge them. And really, aside from just the control flexibility and overall reparability of those controls should they ever fail, the Steam Deck is just a more flexible system, period. Which, I mean, that makes sense, right? The thing is essentially a full-blown PC that, again, has been sort of shoehorned into this handheld form factor, and then really just has like a video game-y front-facing interface that you can interact with for most of your verified or at least playable games on the Steam Deck. Meanwhile, with the Nintendo Switch, it's more of a traditional console that in turn is a whole lot more locked down. I can't imagine a scenario whereby Nintendo would allow you on the Switch or any of its future consoles to say, you know what, I don't think this is running the right software on the back end to make this game performance best. I'm gonna install something experimental and just see how it goes. But you can do that on the Steam Deck, which again, admittedly, depending on your predilection towards tinkering might be a pro or a con, but I really love that Valve is continuing to commit to this openness for the Steam Deck, even providing like that complete teardown video of its innards, which is historically not something you see very often from the other big console manufacturers. And it's great that they have no problem whatsoever with you installing whatever you want on it, because again, effectively it is a PC. So if you don't like SteamOS and you just want to install Windows on this thing and see what you can do with it, you can definitely do that. Meanwhile, with the Switch, you are just sort of locked into whatever, you know, operating system the Nintendo decides you should have, and that's the way you're going to have to play those games. And speaking of games, and actually there are going to be a lot more games for the Steam Deck than there are for the Switch, given the massive amount of time it's had to build up that library over years and years of PC game releases. Now to be fair, that's tempered somewhat by the games that are verified and indeed tested to be playable on the Steam Deck so far, but still, the fact that you can jump into a game from 1993 as easily as you can one that released in 2022 is pretty awesome. Plus, Nintendo is always going to be more stringent about what it actually allows on its console. So if you want to play something that uh, goes north of that mature rating, probably not going to find it on a Nintendo game ever, but you will certainly find it on the Steam Deck if that's your cup of tea. 
And finally, maybe the most obvious area where the Steam Deck has the biggest advantage is the fact that it is demonstrably more powerful than the Nintendo Switch. A gaming PC that is more on par with the power of like a PlayStation 4 or maybe a PlayStation 4.5, somewhere between the 4 and the Pro, I'm not real sure on that, but definitely a more capable system than the hardware that is within the Nintendo Switch. But it's not just that the hardware is more powerful from a graphics perspective, it's also more powerful and flexible in terms of just quality of life improvements as well, right? One of the things that I really hated about the Nintendo Switch early on, and really don't like it much better even after they addressed it with a firmware update, which I thought might happen on a long enough timeline, is support for Bluetooth headphones. It's easy to go ahead and pair Bluetooth devices with the Steam Deck, and as somebody who uses Bluetooth headphones pretty much 24 hours a day, it's really awesome to just go ahead and get even more immersed in that handheld experience with a wireless connection for great audio from some of my favorite games. By contrast, Nintendo did not provide this for a very long time, and when they did, Bluetooth sounded pretty bad, at least in the games that I tested, where I had a lot of uh, just crackling and disconnects and a quality that I was really not expecting whenever they added that particular update. So yeah, I think those really represent the core points of where the Steam Deck is demonstrably better than the Nintendo Switch, right? It's comfortable, it's flexible, it's powerful, it has a ton more games, presumably, and overall it just really did have a performance advantage over the Nintendo Switch that I think is pretty much undeniable. But let's go ahead and look at the flip side of some areas where the Nintendo Switch is definitely better than the Steam Deck. And I think one of the first places you can start is in the smoothness of its ability to go to docked mode. Now I kind of mentioned this in the previous video that I did with my impressions of the Steam Deck, but going to docked mode was not a smooth experience for me, and results of which games took best advantage of it were pretty mixed. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that every time you dock up a Nintendo Switch that the gameplay experience is just magically great on the big screen, in a lot of cases it's not. You'll see situations where you know you have a 4K TV and a smaller resolution game that's blown up on that TV may not look the best, but I will say the act of getting it into docked mode is way easier than the Steam Deck. With a Nintendo Switch, every time I drop it down to the dock and it throws that image to my TV, I know it's going to work basically 100% of the time. With the Steam Deck, you can't even really just drop it in, you have to hook a cable up first, which I understand as a minor gripe, but it almost feels like foreshadowing to the also sort of reduced experience that I've gotten in dock mode so far with the Steam Deck. I'm not saying you can't play it in dock mode, I'm not saying I haven't tried and had a good time with a few games, but again, I've also had issues with, you know, the display just getting kind of garbled and messed up when I tried like a QHD display instead of something that's just 4K or a pure 1080p display, and on top of that, sometimes I would have issues with the controllers and yeah, it is not a smooth experience, and if you had to pit, you know, the Nintendo Switch against the Steam Deck in terms of which one's going to be easier to just jump in and jump out of portable mode play versus sort of sitting on the couch at home docked play, Nintendo Switch has a clear advantage. And to kind of feed off that point, the next thing that I would say is it's not just the docked experience that's smoother, but really I would say the Switch is a more reliable experience overall. Steam Deck works great about 90% of the time, which is really great. And considering the amount of flexibility that you have with the Steam Deck, again, it makes sense to me that you're gonna see like weird glitches or problems with games getting stuck or occasionally having to force quit out of an application. But I think that's the price you pay for the flexibility of a PC, right? But because the Nintendo Switch doesn't have to worry about pulling double duty as both a gaming device and then also as a potential desktop PC, it can play exactly to its strengths and just worry about providing a great game experience. And it does that consistently and almost without issue. I can think of very few moments over the past five years I've been playing a Switch where I launched a game and it didn't do exactly what I expected it to do. By contrast, I've definitely had a few issues with Steam Deck games, even a couple of times on games that were fully verified, where maybe there was a problem with the launcher, or maybe I had to go reconfigure the controls because it didn't quite work to my liking. Now, I know a lot of people will point out that yes, this is as much an advantage as a comm, but I'm just saying it depends on what you're after, right? If you want to pick up and play experience where you're pretty sure about 100% of the time it's just going to do exactly what you want it to do, the Switch has a clear edge over the Steam Deck in that department. And another advantage I think the Switch has over the Steam Deck is power consumption. Now I'm not going to say that there aren't games that tax the Nintendo Switch, there absolutely are, and at launch even Breath of the Wild was one of them. But generally you could expect to at least get two or three hours of gameplay, and it was rare to find a situation where you'd only get an hour, hour and a half of gameplay out of the Switch. Meanwhile, because you can get just these incredible graphics on the Steam Deck, it's not uncommon for a certain game that's running at 60 FPS with a bunch of you know high level effects enabled to start ripping through that battery really, really quickly. But the Switch, with its admittedly more meager capabilities in the graphics department, doesn't really suffer from that problem. So while your games may not look the best, if you want to make sure that you're going to be able to have at least a couple of hours of play while you're on the go, I would be less inclined to reach for a backup battery to go with my Switch than I would to go with the Steam Deck. Of course, even though it doesn't have the best graphics, I will say I absolutely love the Nintendo Switch's OLED screen a lot more than I do the Steam Decks. Don't get me wrong, I definitely appreciate the increased screen real estate of the Steam Deck, but I really appreciate the more vivid colors and deeper blacks that you get from playing something on the Nintendo Switch's OLED screen versus the more traditional LCD that you have in the Steam Deck. 
particularly when it comes to really vibrant like 2D games. These are games that are not going to tax the GPU in any significant way and drain your battery anyways, but those colors just really, really pop on the Nintendo Switch's OLED screen in a way more significant way than they do on the Steam Deck screen. And finally, to kind of end the Switch's advantages, kind of where I started the Steam Deck's advantages would be that even though I don't like the controls as much on the Switch now coming from the Steam Deck, I have to admit it's still a way more portable system. And I think that's because just because a system is technically classified as a portable, that doesn't necessarily mean it's well suited to travel. The Steam Deck is not something that I would want to take with me if I was like going out to a movie or if I was going out and about nearly as much as I'd be comfortable with grabbing the Switch and doing it. It's just lighter, it's a little bit more discreet. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck is massive, and even though I appreciate that they included a carrying case, it's a pretty massive carrying case that basically just stands as a bag on its own. Like, it, it almost seems weird for me to put it in that case and then put it inside of a backpack because it's just, it's so massive, there's just so much protection required for it. And even though I think the build quality is better on the Steam Deck than when we get out of the Nintendo Switch, I still feel like I have to treat it a little bit more gingerly somehow. I think it's just because I know there's like a full-blown PC in there and it's just a more expensive, uh, higher quality device. I feel the need to treat it just with a little bit more care than I feel like I have to treat the Nintendo Switch, which I, I realize that sounds just completely paradoxical, but nonetheless, the Nintendo Switch is a more portable system, and more often than not, if I was going to go like hang out with friends, if I was going to go run out somewhere, I'm still more likely to take the Switch with me than I would the Steam Deck. Now, if I'm just bombing around the house, I would probably be more likely to play the Steam Deck than the Switch, but again, if you're somebody who's on the go a lot, particularly if you're carrying a lot of stuff with you all the time, you might prefer the Switch's smaller form factor and lighter weight compared to, you know, the comparatively beefy Steam Deck. So yeah, at the end of the day, I still think it's kind of silly to try to say that one of these systems is better than the other. Even a lot of the things that I've pointed out here that are differences between the system are really, really close. Like, yes, the Switch might be slightly more portable, but they're both still pretty big. Or yes, the battery life might be slightly better on the Nintendo Switch, but it's still pretty comparable depending on the games that you're playing. And even though you might say that, yes, the Steam Deck has way more games than Nintendo Switch does, some might argue that because of the proprietary games you can only get on the Switch, that it has better games in some cases. But yeah, all that being said, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that one of these systems demonstrably blows the other one out of the water or anything like that, because I think it is largely a matter of subjective perspective, right? Depending on how you play games and what features are most important to you. So in that vein, and in the interest of, you know, just like friendly, civil discussion, I hope, please let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you think that I didn't discuss here or something that does give one of the systems a clear advantage over the other and what your personal thoughts are in regards to how you play games and if one of these systems is better suited to you. I would love to hear your thoughts on it as well. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch. It really does mean a lot to me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.